Alright, 6 a.m. and well, 6:30 a.m. Holy sh! Uh, we are late, but um, we're off to test this car. Test this car. Well, we're off to put this car through its paces against that. So this morning, we are headed to Ulu Yam, one of Malaysia's most famous togies. Usually, we take things like an RX-7, an S13, something old, something metal, something driftable. But today, we're taking something very, very different. Yeah, yeah the exact opposite. Exact like. opposite. All-wheel drive, electric. SUV. <laughs> but that's what that's what that's the whole point, right? We're supposed to put it through its paces. If electric is our future, we need to see if it stacks up. The great thing about this particular ID5 GTX model is that it is dual motor and it's four-wheel drive. So that is the selling point of this particular spec. And um, yeah, we'll be putting through its paces and seeing how well it adapts to this roads, which is not ideal for a breakfast drive. Good morning, Good morning. so morning. sorry. Brothers. Morning. Hey bro. Hey bro. So we're gonna we're gonna go they're gonna go for a bit of a chill drive. Okay. Because it's so wet, right? Yes, yes. So uh what to do? We brought hey, the right wait. we brought the wrong car to this party man. No, it doesn't matter. no it's the right car because it's gonna be a chill drive. But okay. when it dries up later on we might go a little bit faster. Okay. But a good time to film now, you know? Yes. Yeah. We will. Alright. We have fun. That's anyway, I'm looking forward to the breakfast already. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> the most important part of a breakfast drive, the breakfast. Yes. So it's just you and me now. Nathan has hopped into the GTI and we are headed off to the morning drive. So because of the rain and the slightly slippery road, it's going to be a bit of a chill drive at the start. But it's a great chance to test out this drive mode of traction on the GTX. So we're gonna have some fun on Uluyam. So this morning you join us on Uluyam, and Uluyam is one of Malaysia's oldest and best Toyota roads. So it's the best testing grounds to put the GTX through its paces and see how fun and how it stacks up against its petrol cousin, a very traditional, very old school metal hot hatch. So this is a very heavy car and I'm out of my comfort zone when it comes to driving something so heavy on such windy roads. So I'm going to make full use of the driver assist in this case to put this car through its paces. So it's extra slippery and actively raining this morning. So we're going to be extra careful this morning drive and making, making sure we don't put this very expensive EV in a wall. Now we are on Uluyam. Uluyam is one of my favourite roads to drive on. Uluyam has all the right ingredients for it to be a great B road. It has the windy roads, it has elevation changes, and it's just such an enjoyable experience going up the mountain. So on the other hand, we are in a car that seems to have all the raw ingredients when it comes to a B road car. It is heavy, it's electric, the sitting position is high up. This almost counts as a crossover. But really taking it down these roads, I've been really pleasantly surprised. The chassis is stiff, the center of gravity is really low because of all the battery packs. And the steering on these roads, actually pretty good. The traction drive mode seems to help me just a little bit more. And I've been able to really push the car in the corners a little bit more. <music> And in these conditions, I know that my friends in the air cool in front of me, in the Type R in front of me, are not having a great time. But I'm here in the morning, just chilled out. I'm really, really enjoying my drive. There's nothing to worry about. The car is very planted. The car is very stable. It's handling all the bumps, little bumps and undulations really, really well. And yeah, who knew I had so much fun in the EV? I'm really having a just wonderful experience.
So I'm interested to compare my experience here in the GTX compared to the GTI that's chasing me in the back. The Mark 5 GTI is one of the best hot hatches ever on the world. I know because I've owned two of them. The one behind me, I used to own. That car, traditional turbocharged 2 liter engine with a 6-speed manual, that car has all the right recipes to be a fun B-road car. And I know that Jamie, who's driving the car now, is having a wonderful time. Although I realize I'm using more electricity than I normally would, and that range anxiety is slowly creeping in back to me. And I must say, today we are in the presence of some really amazing cars. We have a Thai 964 Safari, it has been lifted 3 inches off the ground with off road tyres. And this car has driven thousands of kilometers from Bangkok, Thailand to join us for Lufthansa today. We have 993s, we have 964s, we have 930s, we have a Type R, we have a Cayenne GTS. <laughs> so bringing an ID5 GTX to this party feels a little bit wrong. But honestly, I'm not enjoying any less than them. So now we have just made the famous right turn onto Patan Kali. So this is the famous road that goes up to Genting Highlands. It's the old road, it's the non-highway road. So these are the, one of the most fun roads I've ever driven on Malaysia. So the Dab Hulu Yam finally gave way to some dry Batangkali, so we're gonna enjoy this drive. Breakfast drive with the GTX. That was fun. That was really fun. That was unexpectedly fun. Like 2.3 ton car shouldn't feel like this going up mountains. Like it had no business feeling so good going up Chenting. Like it was scary. <laughs> it was quite scary that it, was, it felt so good. I'm an EV convert. No, you're not. No no. Okay. Well how 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 was the how was the GTI? Under oh. theory? Under Honestly, theory? a bit under theory. Don't know whether it's just because of the tires. Maybe they're a bit old, but uh, in general, it was all right. Uh, no chance chasing you though. There's like none of us had a chance chasing you. Not even the the dude, client. Though. Dude, that that is so quick. That is really really fast. Do you notice the pedals? So, in the ID5 GTX, the pedals in the car. Yeah. See, look look at what it says. What does it say? Oh, it's pause and play. Yeah, dude. The the pedals in the car is a play button and a pause button. <laughs> but that's really how the car feels. Really? This car, this car is like 2.3 tons. It made it feel not. It really doesn't feel like 2.3 tons. They really did a good job engineering the car and like the suspension. Like, you know how we complain that the suspension is a little bit tough? Mm. But on, on Genting, on, on Ulu Yam, on Badangkali, yeah. this... This Proper is good stuff. It's, it's really good. It's really good. Oh, but yes, um, we've spent the last like four hours having breakfast. Most most of it was eating breakfast, <laughs> but those were some of the most fun roads. Like it was in the wet, and obviously in the wet usually we can't have this much fun because it's kind of sketchy, especially in a front wheel drive car. Yeah. Like I don't think they had much fun in the GTI. No, not really. It was kind of hairy. Yeah, the GTI would from with front wheel drive old technology. It's a bit understeery, and in the front wheel drive car in the wet, unless you you have a rear wheel drive manual, you wouldn't have so much fun. Yeah. But in the GTX, with all the drive assist in the traction mode, the car really just goes. You, you can feel it worry. working, is it? it? It works, it really works. You can completely trust the car. I felt like I could completely trust the car, and I didn't have to worry about the car going to a wall. So, nice. props to Volkswagen, that was good shit. You had a brown pants moment. You had a brown pants moment. I, brown pants moment. I, went, I just turned and it went lane one to lane three instantly. Nice. Okay. See, understeer. That's why you, That's why you buy a GTX. Traction mode. Following 
this, Ip jumped into the GTI that we had brought along on this trip. And it wasn't just any GTI, he actually used to own this exact car. Now, we're back in my old car, the Mark 5 GTI. It's a 6-speed manual, gasoline engine with a turbocharger, the old school way of doing things. It has the EA113 engine, the first generation of VW's 2-litre turbo. And you know what? After 20 years, this car still feels as good as brand new. So this is one of the few cars that reinvented hot hatch for Volkswagen. Obviously, the Mark 1 Golf is very iconic, but as Mark 2, Mark 3, Mark 4 Golf came along, they became a bit too soft and boring. So in 2005, 2006, when Volkswagen reintroduced the Volkswagen Golf GTI, this became what a hot hatch should be. This GTI set the benchmark for all the hot hatches to come in the next decade or so. And until today, the Golf GTI is still a very good car. So I built this one car a few years ago to do all of this and it's still as good. So this car was meant to be the ultimate B-road car. It's so fun, it's so fun. It's a front wheel drive. Look, we put a, we, we put an LSD in this car and ooh. Not much brakes left there. <laughs> yeah. But we put LSD in this car and it just tightened everything up. This is such a good car. It's a good thing that it's dry roads. If not, we're not going to be having any fun in this car at all. In the wet, the front wheel drive platform is under steel city. Yeah, it really was. But in the dry, with road tyres, like you don't want too much grip. In a dry with road tyres, it's perfect. So after driving the ID5 for most of the trip, we are back in the traditional manual car. And how is it? How's the experience? It's not just about the manual, but like the platform itself. It's so much lighter than the ID5 GTX. It's just so much simpler. There's no technology. Literally brakes, turbo, engine, gearbox, and that's it. There's nothing more to the car. It's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be light. It's supposed to be nimble. But honestly, I think the IDX managed to keep a lot of the characteristics of this car even though it's so different fundamentally. And obviously with the EV, the power delivery. But in, in 2005 when this car was here, this was the equivalent of that. It was supposed to be the fast accelerating, turbocharged, exciting new car. And the recipe is the same. I think Volkswagen came close to creating a product in the IDX that's similar in essence to this car. Of course it's much heavier, it's much bigger and it's not metal but it, the similarities between this and the IDX surprising. I'll be honest, I'm surprised. The one thing that the IDX will never get close to this engine noise. You can't beat the sound of international combustion engine. 